What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel today. We're going to be analyzing the top 10 ranked players on PlayStation, their tactics, their formations, the players they're using. And this is going to be a follow up to my meta video that I did for V3.4. So let's get straight into it. Let's go. All right, lads. So one question I've gotten since the last video is about manual pass level and your pass assistance. Most people are going to be playing level one that are pushing rank because it streamlines the pass assistance and what you need to do with your power, your accuracy and your targeting. If you guys want me to do a dedicated video on the differences between level 1 to level 4, showing gameplay like this, I will do it. But get in touch in the comments below, give the video a like, and we will get on that as well. But essentially what you want to be doing with meta is as little passes as possible and the easiest access to the goal, the quickest route to goal. So we're going to be taking a look here at rank 10 to rank 1. Starting with rank 10, and we are going to have Cristo Valbuena. Now I'm going to do a bit of a data analysis at the end of it here and show you some interesting facts from this video. Again, we've got our 4CB centre-back partnership. Costa Corta is essentially another centre-back that's going to act as a left-back. You also have your two strikers up front, and you've got your little midfield there as well. One holding midfielder, two central midfielders, and attacking midfielder. Again, we're going to follow this up with rank number nine right here in a second, which is going to be Klopp or Zeitzler as he's known in game. Now we've got a little bit more traditional meta. This is a 4 2 1 3. You've got your four center backs. Again, that's on the checklist. Most players are going to be using four CBs. When I say four CBs, it essentially means three center backs that are positioned as center backs, and then a right back or a left back or whatever full back you're using as a player that can also play CB, but is able to play right back. So Araujo, Tami, Ashu, Bergomi, very interchangeable, very, very, very uh, much so that you've got variety there. And your three center forwards as well. Focusing on rank number eight, it's going to be a very similar setup, but even a little bit more kind of streamlined with the meta. Again, you've got your four CBs, your three center forwards, and your one hold in DMF. Now, People will ask me as well, is there a difference between what side Tommy Asu plays on or uh, Puyol or Rijkaard or any of those? I would honestly say, lads, at this stage, if you are, have got a team that's over 3-1-2-0 collective strength, you're not going to be really worrying about one or two positions. There's, you know, this is a god squad. All the squads that you see here are ridiculous. And with the skill level that these guys have, again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an extra advantage for them because everything is just flowing. You know, all their pressure, all their runs. Now we're going to get a bit of a mix up here with an old school Eric Ten Hag. And when I say old school, it's probably been the meta since he was introduced as a booster. Ten Hag is no longer the meta meta, but this is a slight switch up with Roberto Carlos as a left back. So it's a non 4 CB. It still has the 3 CB with Araujo, Varane and Nesta. You've got your double uh, strike partnership up front with Rumi and Hullet. And of course, you've got that little triangle in midfield with Messi as an attacking midfielder to launch the ball forward, run and gun. Carlos is an interesting one here, but maybe it's just kind of a little bit of a teaser with Hullet. But Ten Hag is kind of a rare choice for the top 10, as you will see here, because we're straight back to Klopp with rank number six. And again, we have the four center backs. Again, my point is being made. Puyol is a CB, but he can play right back and he's 103 overall. If Araujo is struggling centrally or Puyol is struggling on the flank, you can swap out any of these and tuck in another centre back or you can put Araujo out right back because he can play there. Single pivot DMF and your trio of strikers up front again. So and this guy's actually got one of the lowest collective strengths for the squads that you're about to see. But are you guys starting to see a pattern here develop? Because, you know, it's very easy to see it. Again, we've got rank number five, Klopp again. So this is going to be another formation with a couple of new players in here. But it's pretty much the same coin. You know, it's two sides to the same coin really here. You've got De Jong as a standard player. That's probably just a little bit of a placeholder player. A lot of the guys in the top 10, because they're pushing each other and they're, you know, fighting with each other for ranking, they don't show their full hand uh, a lot of the time. And they'll do a couple of sub tactics. But most of them play straight up with Klopp with a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-1-3, which are four, four centre backs. Or as I keep saying, one of your full backs is going to also be able to play CB. So it's a lot of variety and a lot of mobility. Tommy Yashu is featuring in every single one of these squads nearly that we've seen. If it's not, it's going to be Harajo or else two. Rank number four has got another player that's going to be a single pivot DMF. And then you've got your chaser as your center midfielder with Kante. And you've got your Baggio who's going to be running gun and be able to shoot. Most of these guys that are in top 10, they are used to just completely bombarding you with tactics and with actual skills on the sticks. That if they do get a chance, 
their, you know, conversion ratio up front is probably about 85 to 90 percent so if they get a sniff at goal they're going to be popping it in Shevchenko Neymar and Mbappe again I wouldn't say that that's his final final form uh, formation here or players Mbappe David Villa and Messi we've got boot, kit, boot kiss Messi Hullet as a CMF the old school epic Hullet for rank number three again using Klopp Aspilicueta and Kyle Walker I would question this squad and the setup. Um, one of the lowest collective strengths as well, under 3-100. I would question this with the holding player, the double pivot that we have here with Rodri and Vieira. It's rare enough to see a double pivot now with the way the gameplay is, but if you are using Klopp and you're leaking a couple of goals, a double pivot can be the difference between you actually winning games and losing games. Honestly, it's it's very effective, but Aspilicueta is a strange one in there. Now we have kind of like the real, real, real old school meta except with Klopp. Now, a lot of people have been using Quick Counter. The one thing I'll say about Quick Counter, if you haven't watched my other V3.4 meta video, the new current meta, you will see, and at this, we're going to do a bit of a data analysis on it, as I said, because people were kind of saying, oh, possession this, possession that. Possession is really overpowered, but you will see that most people in the top 10, uh, even the top 50, top 500, are going to have a combination of what you're seeing here. This is a sample size of the top 10. And you will be surprised enough with the data at the end of it, as we as we show here. Tommy Yashu and Araujo again, you've trio centre forwards. Now, this is the rank number one at the moment. This is kind of the new formational meta that we talked about. This works really, really well if you've got an exceptionally good uh, core of players with Rijkaard, Araujo, De Jong and Vieira. All of these are over 100 or 100 rated. Bergomi and Tommy Ashu can also play across the, the back four. You can shove Rijkaard out DMF and bring De Jong back. You can, you know, with the formation changes, now there's a lot of variety there. Ribéry is a fantastic option. You've got big time Mbappe and Messi up front. One of the best players in the game is Mbappe. So that is just kind of the top 10 analysed. There isn't much variety in it which brings us to our data. Now, we're going to lay this out as simple as we possibly can, right? And we're going to show you a couple of things. Now, this data that I have done out here is a top 10 ranking in a spreadsheet kind of style, and it's just visualized, right? So we've made a visual graph or two. Now, on the left, you're going to have the split of the top 10. Which players are using Ten Hag Booster? Which players are using Valbuena? Which players are using Klopp? And you will see that eight of the top 10... And five of the top five are using Klopp. One are out of the top ten are using Ten Hag. And one player of the top ten on PlayStation are using Valbuena. On the right side, you have four CBs. Eight squads in the top ten. Eight of the top ten players are using four CB setup. And a three, C, uh, three center forward. Seven are using a three center forward setup as well. And then we also have a single DMF. How many of the top 10 are using a single DMF setup, such as Vieira, such as Rijkaard, such as any of those? Well, that's eight as well. So this data, again, people were talking to me about possession game and about Pep and saying, oh, I'm beasting with possession. There's always going to be exceptions to the rule, man. Always going to be exceptions to the rule. I pre pre uh, prefer possession myself, but I also feel that long ball counter and quick counter, they're so, so, so easy to use and so effective with the runs off the ball that if you are good enough with using Klopp, either using a 4-2-2-2 or a 4-2-1-3, and you're manually able to defend the gaps that quick counter leaves, that is why a lot of the top 10, that's why eight of the top 10 on PlayStation are using this. And also, you can bring in subtax into it, uh, sub tactics into it and you can have a five at the back you can go back to a four at the back you can have a little bit of width with your center midfielders your attacking midfielders just because the top 10 are using a very streamlined formation and tactical setup with Klopp and 80 percent of them are using that it doesn't mean that if they go a goal down in the first 20 minutes they're not going to have plan b c and d that is kind of what separates them from you know the, the rest of the guys outside of the top 10 you know so that is a big thing that we will discuss if you guys want the manual pass uh, you know, level pass assistance video and showing gameplay clips of what it does, why it works. Some people don't want to push rank, man, and that's fine. You know, some people like to play casual, but this is kind of where the meta is at, at the moment. I am going to be working on, and I have a video nearly done on the anti-meta as well, to kind of get past this. You don't have to, you know, play meta to beat guys like this. Possession is really good for anti-meta. I'm going to show you a video of that. But don't forget to smash the like button if you like it. If you're new here, if you haven't subscribed already and you're onto the video, please do subscribe. I will be back very, very soon. Talk to you then. Peace.